I'm Hossein Rogani, a PhD student at the University of Miami. Uh, I'm going to talk about an early age defect of concrete and a solution to control this defect. Uh, in this presentation, I will cover uh, the, the plastic shrinkage of the concrete and using a non-metallic reinforcement, which is the fiber reinforced polymers to control this type of the cracks. First, let's talk a little bit about the plastic shrinkage and its driving causes. The, the, the plastic shrinkage has been studied over the last 60 years. It's one of the earliest flaws. It, it, can it, it will happen in the first six to eight hours, which is the, between the initial setting time and the final setting time. And it's caused by the restrained volumetric changes. Later, we will uh, discuss it why it should be restrained. And then uh, the shrinkage cracking not only affects aesthetics, uh, but the main important thing is the increasing the probability of uh, uh, decreasing the durability and a structural service life. And uh, if you want to discuss, uh, the uh, mention the driving causes of the plastic shrinkage, uh, here I mentioned just five of them. You can see the settlement of the solid particles. I mean, your aggregates, fine and coarse aggregates, bleeding, evaporation, capillary action, and the surface finishing. And I can say in this study, at least as I understood, the main important ones are the bleeding rate of water and also uh, the evaporation rate of the water. But uh, a main question here is how to control this type of uh, cracks. There are, the, there are many different approaches to control them or uh, prevent them, control them, or later just repair them. Uh, you can use alternative concrete mixture, concrete surface sealers, curing techniques, uh, and also uh, using the, the reinforcement. Uh, to control the shrinkage cracking, the minimum steel reinforcement is typically designed and implemented. But uh, the problem with the steel is the corrosion. In, 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 the, in the areas with high risk of corrosion, the steel is not the best option. So we have to think of some non-metallic reinforcement. And the focus of our study is the fiber reinforced polymer reinforcement. They can be the bars or the meshes. Uh, but another important question is why FRP? We have many different techniques. Uh, we have different reinforcements, epoxy coated reinforcement, and, and ma uh, ma many other stuff. But why, uh, why FRP? In sustainable constructions, technologies and material systems are developed to last longer, uh, emit less carbon dioxide, and also co uh, consume lower uh, energy in their production. Uh, the, the, the first thing is uh, about, about the FRP, the first thing is increasing the service life of the structure. Uh, and how it works, when, when, you, when you have the FRP instead of the steel, you will not have the corrosion. For example, if your structure is, is going to take, uh, is, is going to uh, uh, survive for like 50 years, using the FRP, you can increase it to like 70 years, 75 years. So it can, in, it can increase your, the service life of your structure. And regarding this research that uh, you, you can see the numbers in the table, so it can decrease the carbon dioxide emissions and also it can lower the energy consumption. So I can say that it's a good sustainable solution to control the plastic shrinkage cracks. Uh, and here uh, I want to start exactly what we are doing in this research. Uh, in this research, uh, we, uh, we have to evaluate, uh, uh, evaluate the performance of the FRP in comparison to the steel, because steel is because we are trying to replace the steel uh, by, by, by the FRP bars. Uh, first, uh, we have started uh, with the guidelines of uh, the ASTM C1579 uh, and also the acceptance criteria number 521. Uh, but the thing is uh, about, about the ASTM C1579 is uh, the FRC. Actually, in the, in the ASTM C1579, we are not using FRP. It's based on the FRC, which is just the fibers in your concrete mixtures. It, there, there's no rebars. There's no uh, internal reinforcement. So it's just the fibers. So we had to modify that test to something else. But the, 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 the main guidelines is based on these two codes. Uh, and those, uh, those guidelines are, are the conditions of the restraint, the moisture loss, the concrete clear cover. But we made a lot of changes to come up with a, a specific test method which works for the internal reinforcement. 
uh, and uh, okay. Uh, but first here, uh, later we'll discuss it, but this, this photo ha has some details. Uh, we, we have a riser here, so later we'll discuss it, and also two restraint here, rebars and the adjustable 3D printer chairs. Uh, so here, here this, dish, this, uh, this uh, image has uh, more details. So, uh, okay, and uh, about our... Uh, wind tunnel and, uh, and the mold. In the pictures, you can see our test setup in the same slab. So the, the left one is our slab. We have uh, two, uh, uh, actually we have two specimens. One is reinforced with the FRP and another one is reinforced with the steel. We have both of them in the same wind tunnel to have the same environmental conditions, same wind speed, uh, to be able to compare them together. Uh, and in the in the right uh, picture, you can see the wind tunnel is to obtain a laminar wind flow on top of the specimen to accelerate the evaporation rate and provide a severe condition. Uh, in this test, it's, it's really important to make a severe condition for the plastic shrinkage. Plastic shrinkage cracks, why? Because if you do not see the cracks, you cannot really evaluate them because you cannot say that uh, now, when you do not see the cracks, you cannot say that your, your, your rebars are working good or just, your, uh, your, just the situation is not good enough to see the cracks or maybe just the concrete is strong enough and there's no plastic shrinkage cracks. So the main thing is to crack the concrete. Uh, and here I have some, uh, I, I put some uh, parameters that, uh, that affect the plastic shrinkage. Uh, there are the environmental variables, wind speed, relative humidity, ambient temperature, that they, they affect the evaporation rate of water, which is like the critical items in, item in this research. And the next one is the material characteristics. In this research, we have the reinforcement and the concrete. So the reinforcement are FRP and steel, so we need their, their, uh, their characteristics. And the next one is, I, I mean, and the next material is the concrete itself. And uh, restraint conditions, as I mentioned in that image, I, taught, I, I told you that it has more details. So the restraint helps you to make the cracks because if your concrete shrinks together, I mean, from top to the bottom in all the side, shrinks together, actually you do not see the cracks. So you need some reinforcement at the end side to force the concrete to crack. And the next item is the esters concentration. So, uh, we, we have that stress riser at the mid span to force the concrete to occur at the mid span because it's easier to investigate it when you're sure that the, that the, the crack is at the mid span. And also, you have a wider crack to investigate it. You will not have random cracks everywhere. Uh, and the next item is the concrete clear cover, uh, con uh, clear uh, concrete cover, which is uh, three, I mean, which is 0 0.75 inches in this research ba based on the guidelines of uh, acceptance criteria 521. And the next one is the base roughness. So as the base of the specimen, we have a steel plate that we have those T sections on top as the rear strengths and the risers. And the next one is uh, the workmanship because uh, I mean, even the direction of the traveling on top of your concrete can affect the plastic shrinkage. So there are, there are the items that uh, affect uh, these cracks. So here are the environmental variables, and it's one uh, example of uh, those, those measurements. We did the measurements every 20 minutes. So for the uh, ambient temperature, relative humidity, and the wind speed, these items are affecting your evaporation rate. And the next one, as I mentioned before, is the material characteristics. For the steel, we are using the, the normal grade 60, so I didn't, uh, I didn't mention it here. Uh, but about the FRP, the main items, I think they are uh, they are the stiffness, tensile properties, surface enhancement, or I can say surface roughness, and also the bond strengths. And about the concrete is the compressive ester. These are the, the things that we measured: compressive strengths, tensile strengths, time of setting. Time of setting will show the initial and final time of setting. That it's 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 the time that you have. Uh, you you should force your concrete to cracks if you want to see the pla the plastic shrinkage. And the next one, it was the concrete temperature, uh, which affects again the evaporation rate. So it's not a, it's not an environmental condition, em environmental characteristics, but it's uh, related to concrete. And the next one is the rate of evaporation that we measured it using the, uh, uh, using some pans of waters, pans of uh, pans of water. Uh, and uh, the the last measurements, which is the main important measurements, is uh, is uh, crack measurements. Uh, 
it, uh, we, uh, we divided uh, each, each slab, I mean, each section, I mean, FRP and the steel to five different sections. We captured the image. We put them in, uh, in the image processing software and the image processing software is used to measure the crack width, length, and the area. So using those numbers, you can, uh, you, you can calculate your uh, crack reduction ratio and say if the FRP is an efficient option in comparison to the steel or it is not. And another thing was the depth of the, the cracks. Depth of the cracks is just important, is very important, but it's important to make sure that your reinforcement are engaged. If, if, if the cracks are just superficial, you cannot say that the, the reinforcement are working. So it should be deep enough to make sure that the, the reinforcement are engaged. Uh, and uh, since th this study is still ongoing and we are still working on that, the previous casting was just before this convention. Uh, here I, I have some conclusions, but I call them the expected conclusions because still we are working on that. Uh, the the overarching uh, goal of this work is to provide experimental evidence to evaluate the shrinkage cracks in concrete by comparing the FRP and the steel. There are some contractors that they are using the FRP, they are using the steel, they are kind of satisfied with them, but we need to codify this, 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 these things. We, we, should, we should provide them some guidelines, we should provide them uh, a code that, 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 that they can certify the, their, their materials, for, I mean, for the contractors, for the providers. And uh, the, the, the next thing is establishing a feasible equivalency between FRP and steel, because this, this reinforcement are going to use in non-structural applications like slabs on ground. So they, they do not really design this stuff. Uh, so if we want to uh, help the contractors, we should come up with some equivalency tables that say that, hey, if you were using like number three uh, steel rebars at 12 inches, now if you want to go to FRP, for example, you should use uh, number three rebars, but instead of 12 inches at 10 inches or at I don't know, 14 inches. You have to play with those numbers, but they actually do not need to redesign it. And the next thing is the minimum uh, FRP reinforcement as, sec as secondary reinforcement for temperature and shrinkage cracks. The 0 0.0018 is a, is a very, I think, familiar number for all the civil engineers, which is used at temperature and shrinkage reinforcement when you have the steel rebars. But now we are using something which is completely different. It's, it's totally elastic. Uh, it has different uh, it has different tensile modulus, tensile strengths, and uh, almost everything is different. So you cannot use the same number. We have to come up with the minimum FRP reinforcement area. And also, finally, uh, we should come up with an ASTM standard to provide it to the to the suppliers that they can uh, they, they, they can test their materials to receive the certification from I don't know from ICCS or from uh, wherever they are working with.